Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at a little dongle from 8-Bit Doe that connects up with your Nintendo Switch or your PC or Mac or Raspberry Pi and uh, connects up modern game controllers with them. This is what it looks like here. It costs about 20 bucks and uh, we're going to be looking at this today and seeing how well it works with a few different devices here, but I think its primary objective is to be an accessory for your Switch so that you can use your uh, DualShock 4 controller here, for example, or one of the newer uh, Xbox controllers with your Nintendo console. Kind of a cool concept, especially if you don't want to buy a Pro controller and you have these controllers laying around. It might provide some service for you there. It also works on a PC to give you X input functionality with a PS4 controller, for example, without having to have any software installed. So that might be a useful feature too. So we're going to explore all of that in this video, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this did come in free of charge from 8 Doe. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one has reviewed this content before it was uploaded. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. There isn't much to this one. It's just a USB dongle along with a button on the back that you use for pairing up your controllers with it. Now I'm going to start off with the switch here because I, again, I think this is probably the uh, biggest use case here is to get some of these controllers to work with the switch that otherwise would not. So I'm going to hit the pairing button here on the dongle and I'm going to boot up my PS4 controller here by holding down share and the PS4 button. It'll start uh, flashing here and in a second it'll vibrate and pair up with that. You can see we got the controller indicator popping up in there and now I can load up uh, Super Mario Odyssey here and start playing it with my PS4 controller, including, at least on the PS4 controller, motion controls. The only motion controls supported are the PS4 motion controls. It won't work with even uh, a Wii controller, for example, but uh, you do get them on here. In fact, the PS4 is uh, relatively fully functional uh, on the Switch, including vibration, motion controls, and uh, just about everything else. And the controls will map to their counterparts on the uh, Switch Pro controller for example. So, for example, the plus button is here. Uh, you also have uh, whatever the minus button does over on that side. So you do have the same functionality. If you want to go home, you hit the home button and you can go home. I don't believe the headphone jack works, but everything else does. The only thing you can't do with this uh, is turn on the switch when it goes into standby. You can do that on the real uh, Pro Controller by hitting the home button. Uh, it doesn't work with this, but otherwise everything else, including again the motion controls, seem to be working just fine on here, which is pretty cool. But again, motion controls are limited only to the PS4 uh, uh, DualShock controller, whatever they call this thing now. So just keep that in mind. If we go over to the system settings here, there is one thing you need to set up ahead of time, and I'll put it up on the big screen here so you can see it. Uh, in the controllers and sensors section, oops, I just went out of there. Uh, in the controllers and sensors section, there is a pro controller wired communication that needs to be set to on. Uh, this is off by default, so you make sure that is on because uh, this dongle here is essentially emulating what a switch controller would do if it was plugged in directly. Uh, the only warning they give you here, and this is probably why they leave it off, is that uh, the Switch Pro controller cannot use its Amiibo scanner if it is plugged in. But that is not a big loss here because you don't have an Amiibo scanner on the PS4 anyhow, so uh, you really don't lose all that much here connecting up this controller, but you do have to get up to turn the console on if you are docked to your television and it goes to sleep. Now it is compatible with other controllers, so you can hook up the 8-bit dough stuff, but uh, these are compatible on their own without the dongle. It'll also work with Wii and Wii U controllers. So the classic controller here works along with the uh, Wii motes, but the motion controls, as I mentioned, do not work with those Wii controllers, at least not yet. So uh, you are limited again to motion controls only with the PS4 controller. It also supports Xbox controllers. This one is from the Xbox One S. And my understanding is that uh, this will work with uh, the newer Xbox controllers that work over Bluetooth that are designed for those newer consoles. So you can uh, pair it up again much the same way. You put the dongle into pairing mode, uh, push the pairing button on the Xbox controller. This one takes a little bit longer to pair, but it'll vibrate here and you can then start using your Xbox controller on your Nintendo Switch. So if you have a controller that you really like, uh, this $20 dongle here will get you all connected and everything uh, should work. It's actually feeling pretty nice on here. And I also did an input lag comparison between a PS4 controller connected through the adapter and the native Switch Pro controller that is directly connected to the console. And I found the Switch controller did do a little better. It came in around 68 milliseconds or thereabouts. 
Uh, the PS4 controller was coming in at a range between uh, 72 and 92 milliseconds. So not bad. It didn't introduce all that much more lag, but there is a slight amount based on my measurements. Now my methodology is I hook my switch up to my 4K Samsung TV over there. That TV really represents, I think, what many consumers have in their home. It's like a sub $600 set. I turned it into game mode so we get a little less input lag from its image processing. And then I shoot the screen at 240 frames per second with my iPhone and count the frames uh, to see how long it takes for a button push to get registered. Now, the only gotcha you're going to encounter involves the PS3 controllers. The pairing for these is a little different. So what you need is a computer first uh, that you plug the controller into. Uh, you then take the dongle out of your Nintendo Switch. You hold down the uh, pairing button here and connect it up to the computer. Now you can do this on a Mac or on a PC. And when you have both things connected here, you click on pair. And what this will do is it will meld the, uh, the PS3 controller to the dongle and then you can use it on the Switch or another uh, computer if you want. You don't have to do this every time, just the initial pairing and then after that, uh, you are good to go. Now you should also know that this will only pair with one controller at a time. So if you want to use multiple controllers, my guess would be you'll have to get multiple dongles here to use more than one. But in my testing, it only pairs up with a single controller. Let's take a look now and see how it works on a PC. All right, so I've got the PS4 controller now connected up to the PC with the dongle here. And what's nice about this is that because this was already paired with the dongle on the Switch, when I plugged it into the computer, it just started working right off the bat, but you get X input compatibility here, which means that it functions just like an Xbox controller would. I've got this free app that I run here called Game Controller Tester, so we can see exactly how well it works. So I'll pull down the left analog trigger here, for example, and you can see uh, the amount of detail we get in that motion, which is nice. You can see the, uh, the sticks here seem to work just fine. Everything is registering on screen without issue, and we're getting all these buttons mapped properly as well. So I've been pretty pleased with uh, how well this is working here. Everything just seems to connect up uh, perfectly without having to have, again, some kind of intermediary software to work. And input lag on my gaming PC was very, very good, around 56 to 60 milliseconds, which is uh, fairly close to a USB connected Xbox One controller that came in at 44 milliseconds. My gaming PC has a 144 hertz monitor that I use for this test and it really was pretty impressive to see that kind of score on a wireless device. Now on the PC, um, the PS4 controller and the 8-bit uh, Doe uh, Pro game pads here uh, both support the rumble motion, but all of the other controllers do not support rumble. So the Wii U controller here, the PS3 controller, uh, these will not rumble and none of the motion controls will work on the PC, uh, even from the PS4 controller, which does work on the Switch. And I would imagine as they update firmware on the dongle, we might see this change over time. In fact, between the time that I got the dongle and reviewing it, uh, they added the Xbox One S and X controller support. So uh, as things change, we might see an update to that. I'll put a link down below in the video video description to their compatibility chart that's inside of their instruction manual. So if you do have uh, specific controllers you'd like to get more information about, uh, you can look them up on there. Now, I also plugged it into my NVIDIA Shield TV and it seemed to work fine on there with the PS4 controller. I didn't get any rumble there. I didn't expect to get that, but it did work for uh, controlling the game. So the basic controls worked there. Raspberry Pi also worked as did the Mac for games that support Bluetooth controllers there. It shows up on those platforms like a Bluetooth game controller. So anything that you would normally expect from a Bluetooth controller, you'll get uh, out of the dongle here. And again, you'll have compatibility with devices that may or may not be able to pair up on their own. So that was good to see. But I think the real value here is the Nintendo Switch because you suddenly gain a lot more controller options that are really high quality controller options like Sony and Xbox controllers. And the Sony controller in particular uh, provides you just about all of the functionality you get with Nintendo's own Pro Controller, which was a uh, great thing to see here. Uh, secondarily, I would say the PC picks up some usefulness because you can use the PS4 controller in X input mode without a software driver. Again, just plug the dongle in gets you up and running there. So I think PC users might see some utility out of this, but I think the switch is really the sweet spot for it. So that's going to do it for the USB adapter from 8BitDo, and this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, 
and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.